Right, here we are in the confines of Logic and we've loaded up Alchemy. And when you first load up Alchemy, this is very simply the screen you're met with. So let's break it down. So look at the top section first. Right over on the left hand side here, we've got three separate icons. We've got Browse, Simple and Advanced. And these are three main views inside Alchemy. Browse very simply shows us the presets that are available in Alchemy. Simple gives us some very broken down attributes that can be changed for those presets. And Advanced is what we we would use to design our own patches in Alchemy. Just in kind of the central area here, we've got these drop down arrows and the word default. So there's another way to access our preset library. We can either use the drop down and go through the various options in here, or we can use the tab arrows just to flick through. Underneath file, we have a really useful one, which is initialize. That gives us a completely reset Alchemy. Save would save our current patch we're working on, and save as allows us to save it as something new. Under quality, we've got a couple of different options. Draft, good, great, and ultra. This really simply is the sin engine and how much CPU you're going to allow it to draw while you're designing sounds. By default, it opens on great. You can go to ultra. It's going to reduce some of the aliasing that can happen. All depends on your CPU and what you've got going on in the project. Also, what kind of sounds you want to create. You can get a different feel by changing the quality. We've then got a built-in limiter. We can just have it on or off. Um, when you're designing sounds in Alchemy, especially if we start using the additive engine, it's really easy to cause a sudden spike and excel in the level. So just having a built-in limiter there is a nice protection. However, you may want to switch it off before you uh, finish designing your patch, but by default, it's always engaged. Then got a volume control. It's usually down by 12 dB, so we've actually got some more headroom there to work with as well. So in the darker blue section, we've got basically the categories for all of our presets and the rating system. So if we start with the category, there's subcategory. So we could, for example, go base, acoustic, and it's going to start filtering down the presets for us and we can start choose then we can choose genre or timbre however we've also got a drop down here so we can actually change those so we can do it literally by the sound designer for example you see that some of my own patches might in fact appear in here whenever we select a patch on here it instantly loads so you can see there the choir patches loaded for us straight away And say we really like that sound, we can rate it to come back to it later, either five star, or if we think it was terrible, we can give it a one star, and we know just as a quick glance, the sounds we've listened to and what we thought of them. For the most part, I don't really use this, there's only a couple I've ever rated. Now at the bottom of Alchemy, we have the perform section here, and depending on the patch we load, we're gonna have different iterations here. And we've got basically eight sections we can move through, uh, and it's gonna adjust a set of parameters on the sound. Now essentially these parameters are linked to the X1 and X2 controls over here, which in turn can be linked to different parameters. You see when we move them, a series of different parameters also moves around. If you want to create these yourself, we can simply right click and rename them or store a current snapshot for example. We'll look into that a little bit more when we create our own patches. On the left hand side, grayed out, we can also switch this over to the ARP. So we heard that this particular patch had an arpeggiation with it. And we can see that stepping through here. We'll cover the arpeggiator as well a little bit later. And then we've got our effects section. Now, now the effects section in Alchemy is extensive. Essentially, we can choose to affect the main, which is going to be all of the outputs, or the individual oscillators, of which we have four. Anywhere that says none, we can switch that particular drop down on. And we can choose from a series of effects in here. So in the advanced tab here, we're going to go back into file and initialize preset. And this will start us back just as a default saw. So just to break this down, as it can seem quite daunting, but once you understand it, it's actually pretty much the same for each section. So global here has our four oscillators up here. We can enable them just with the controls here. This will now have all four oscillators playing. They've got some very simple built-in controls of so volume, tune, and pan. So for example, we could go two octaves down, one octave down, and perhaps one octave up here to create a really thick sound. Over on the left hand side, we've got A, B, C, and D. And this is where we can deep dive into the oscillators. And the oscillators inside Alchemy are very, very in depth. So we've opened up 
A here. Now we've got the same controls that we had before, just here, with our fine tune, panning and volume. However, we've got a set of other controls underneath as well. For example, we can now choose the filter it's going to. We've got one, two or three. We can also choose whether it's going to be serial or parallel for that processing. The filter here does also need to be enabled. As you can see, when we enable one and change to the other, it does disable. So we have three filter options, as well as our global filter here, which applies to the global and the main and everything going out. So if we select filter one and switch it on, for example, we've now got a cutoff only applied to oscillator A. If I was to go back to global, enable B, and we'll put it up one octave, the filter still only applies to A. So these are individual filters for each oscillator. There's a whole series of filter types. If you don't understand the <coughs> If you don't understand the different things, I'll put a breakdown on the screen. Essentially, LP is low pass, and then BP is band pass, HP is high pass, and you've got a dB value, and that just describes how quickly that that sound goes from its initial cutoff point to zero. So it'll be 12 dB per octave. So, it, so over the course of 12 notes on a keyboard or in a frequency range, it would decrease by 12 decibels, 24 decibels, 60 dB, for example. Then got a resonance control and a drive control. Drive is a bit, a bit like total harmonic distortion. It's going to saturate depending on the resonance and the filter type. As you can hear, when you switch filter types, the drive sound does also change. We've then got the option to send as well uh, to filter one and two or to filter one and effects A and various other combinations. As we go on further and build patches, we'll explain more of how we can use that. Now, the oscillators don't only have a saw available. In fact, these are probably the most in-depth oscillators in any synth you're going to use pretty much ever. Where it says saw, if we click on here, we've got some options. So we've got load VA. And in here, we've got a whole series of common and not so common waveforms. For example, we can have a classic sign, or the square, or triangle. But equally, we, but equally we've got things uh, that are a bit more complex. Notice we can also import audio, load source, or even randomize or swap with a source. Now this is where things get a little bit deeper. On the right hand side here, you can see we've got additive, spectral, pitch, formant, granular, sampler, and VA. Each of the individual oscillators of which we've got A, B, C, and D in alchemy are capable of those types of synthesis. Meaning we can have four oscillators with one being additive, one being spectral, one being a sample, and one being a granular synth, all within one session of alchemy, which is pretty insane. So that's been a quick introduction to alchemy. In the next video, we're going to have a look at diving deeper with the additive oscillator. Look forward to seeing you on the next one.